sorry about your friend Tari. His loss was unfortunate. But in my time, I have learned that everything occurs according to Akara's plan. We in the village are preparing for the offering ceremony to receive our new scion. Only then will you truly understand. It is when we offer one of our own to Akara, as a gift, and as testament to our trust in his guidance. The ritual takes place once a generation. We bring our chosen one to the mountaintop, where she receives the blessing of Akara and becomes the scion. From that day forward, she holds a place of honor in the village until the next offering occurs. Akara speaks through the scion. They are one. Without the wisdom of the Scion, we here in Cape Solace would be lost. She guides us and keeps us true to Akara's path. And at the end of her life, the Scion will depart this island with her guard, taking the power of Akara so it may find root elsewhere, like a seedling in the wind. Captain Brattigan explained that you plan to bring dead Kel to justice. I understand your reasons, but the quest is folly. Still, I wish you success. So I will point you in the direction of a man named Key. He is the oldest castaway on Gallows End. He will have answers. Before you speak with him, I must ask you a favor. Your journey will take you past Soul Deep Fasting, where my wife Bridget prepares for the offering. Take her this amulet. She will want it. All scions wear it during the ceremony. It is just down the beach to the west. You will know it by the Watchers standing guard out front. Do not provoke them. Had he sent word you'd be visiting? I stole a look at what Paddy's up to in the courtyard, and it looks like a fine beast pen. I, for one, would be thrilled to train beasts there. Cape Solace is nice, if you're into religious zealotry. Me, I prefer hanging out with animals to people anyways. I was trained to fight and bend the beast to mankind's service. Not skills in great demand here. We've never needed to fight, thanks to Akara's protection. And Alder refuses to allow beasts in the village. Thinks highly of himself, but there's no one better to have on your side. Paddy's been telling me about his plans. I've trained beasts since I was a lad. And I'd be right pleased to do the same for you and Gravel. And to get out of this place, I'll gather my things and join you there shortly. Take care. My liege, I am certain you'll be impressed. Incidentally, I was thrilled to hear that Cillian Keen from Cape Solace has joined Gravehall Keep as its Beastmaster. You should speak to him at the Beast Pen once he arrives. It's an exquisite Beast Pen, isn't it? Cillian and his beasts will be very comfortable there. No keep in Ice Brine Coast can claim a Beast Pen as fine as this one. Emberwood, sailcloth, bear hide, sea steel, and beach stone. They can all be found in sufficient quantities around the island, but not always in the safest locales. I have only just begun, my liege. Several texts I found in the keep refer to an unusually large armory beside the main structure. 
For this, I'll need two bundles of ember wood, two bundles of sailcloth, and four bundles of sea steel. A journal belonging to, I think, the Keep's original master-at-arms has convinced me that the collapsed building to the left of the Keep was an armory. There are some cryptic references to a method he devised to determine how effective a student is in combat, but it's beyond me. In my dream, I saw a building flanking the main structure. I now know it's the armory. It was a place for weapons, as you'd expect, but it was also to be a grand academy for the art of combat. The Diverger built armories and trained their masters at arms to divine how much damage you inflict when attacking with weapons or even spells. Sea steel is usually found around the coast. I'll mark on your map where you're likely to find the crates. Once you get back, I'll get started on construction right away. It's going to be the spitting image of the original structure. When the time comes, we'll have to choose your master at arms wisely to be worthy of such an armory. Mypha tells me there's a new arrival in Cape Solace who might be interested. Bye. You must be the great liege that Paddy has been talking about. He kept going on and on about how magnificent and benevolent you are. Honestly, I just agreed to move up here to get out of the wind. That town on the cliff was a bit breezy. Ah. Take care, my liege. It wasn't easy, but I followed that landing party inland. Really carrying that much cargo is here by accident. There's a storm brewing. I'll be happy to know that I took a prisoner. That dainty fellow over there. He says he's harmless, but I'm not so sure. I had a chance to scout a bit closer and caught sight of another ship. One that's still intact, just offshore. If I were crazier, I'd steal it and make for open sea. Mostly, I just want to go after their leader. These people are here for blood. We'll know soon enough. I must say, they resemble the war party more than a ship's crew. I counted warriors, and even a few scholars among them. It's not uncommon for outsiders to come to Gallows End, seeking Akara's power and the island's magic. I just haven't witnessed it in many years. Hoping you'd see things my way. The people in Cape Solace always lay their fates down at the feet of others. Whether it's Akara, Dead Kel, or even my father. I will no longer stand by and do nothing. I will go and I will find the one behind this invasion. He will answer to me. Watchers. They don't look like much of a threat, but they'll melt the flesh from the bones if you so much as look upon the scion with malice. She is Akara's slave, a mouthpiece for the god himself. The mother deserved more of a life than that. She was a great woman, is a great woman. Goodbye.
What is it you seek? The new scion must not be disturbed. Her meditations are of great importance to the offering ceremony. Without the proper preparation, she won't withstand the power that comes with Akara's blessing. It will destroy her. He is the reason all of us on Gallows End enjoy peaceful lives, full of grace and enlightenment. He is just, and that is more than we deserve. We are the Watchers. From birth, we are removed from the village and immersed in training. Our gifts come from Akara himself. We are his eyes on Gallows End, his protective hand around the Scion and her people. It was once a Diverga passage, but after they abandoned this island, it was occupied by the first villagers of Cape Solace. The first Scion resided here, behind these warm, protective walls. Now all Scions undergo their preparations here, safe and under our watchful gaze. It is how a mere man or woman becomes the hand of a god. The successor to the Scion is chosen months ahead of the ceremony, so she can reflect on the importance of her duties. When the offering occurs, Akara passes his blessing to the Chosen One, who then becomes the Scion. It is beautiful. She embodies Akara's power and represents his good influence here on Earth. Many wish to be the Scion, but ultimately, one is chosen. She must be strong enough to contain Akara's blessing, for it would consume lesser beings. Soon, that name will mean nothing. She will be the Scion, Akara's chosen one, and the vessel for his power. I will give her the amulet once she breaks from her meditation. You must leave now. That is not a suggestion. That is not your concern. She is safe. Nothing will happen to the Scion under the gaze of the Watchers. Farewell. You've done a good thing, more than Cape Solace would ever do. They should care more about helping strangers than converting them. The one you rescued looks strong, fierce. I do hope his strengths are a help and not a hindrance. I will watch him closely. We Darklefar are nothing if not careful. Farewell.
Forgive my confusion, but have we met? I arrived on the island several months ago, or so the villagers tell me. I aim this nasty bump on my head. Tricky business memory. When you have it, you forget it's there. Once it's gone, you forget, well, everything. Even now, I came out here for some reason I can't recall. All I have to show for my time is this map. Little good it will do me here. My name is Aubrey, but that is all I remember. The other villagers say they found me nearly drowned in the waters of Scuttle Beach. I am almost certain he is the reason I'm here. He's known for sinking vessels that stray near the island. The other villagers advise me to stay near Cape Solace, but I can't help it. There's something in my nature that craves exploration. They are a determined people, driven to tame the elements with nothing but the strong grip of their fingers, the will in their hearts. Sea or stone, they will batter down obstacles to reach their goals. Make no mistake about that. I'm not sure how I came to be here or why I was in the area to begin with. I detest that. The questions! Well, it's not a whole map, not really, more of a scrap of parchment. I found it among these debris. But why was I looking through them in the first place? The salvage? The tortoise eggs or crabs? The shells? Maybe it's a map leading to buried treasure. I'd say it's de Verga by the lettering and the designs, but I don't even know why I'd say such a thing. What's a de Verga? I don't know. I can hardly remember my name most mornings. If you look closely at the corners of the parchment, you'll see that it seems to have been torn from a larger hole, perhaps into many separate pieces. Please do, it's yours. What good is a map on an island with no boats? If I come upon any more, you're welcome to them. That is, if I remember who you are. Don't ask me. Most mornings I need to be reminded of my own name. My advice isn't exactly reliable. Watch out for pirates.
Listen to me. You have to listen. She's in there. Angerard is in there, and she won't come out. We have to do something, please. I've met a lot of people in my time, and few of them are as genuine and reliable as that group of castaways. I was a fool. I accepted an offer from the Alpha Merchant Navy. They were looking for brave souls to capture dead Cal and bring him to justice. I was only a boy then, stupid, weak. Within days I was a castaway, which is more than I ever was before. The villagers in Cape Solus call him the Fallen One, and for good reason. Whatever he desires, he takes. Whoever he despises, he kills. If those are not the qualities of the damned, I don't know what are. I won't deny it. My life on Gallo's End is better than the one I left behind. It's peaceful, beautiful, and I have a purpose. The only reason I ever think about leaving is because of Angerard. The misery casts a pall over everything. The unthinkable. She made a bargain with the pirate king himself. Dead Kel. For years, Angerard has yearned for her life back in Drithia. Her days were spent in silence, her nights in a pool of tears. But I never thought she would turn to him. I tried to stop her, I did, but she won't listen to me. We've been friends for three years, but that means nothing to her now. Island legend says that Mudhold is where dead Kel creates his fair gorter crew with the help of a wizard. I'm not sure exactly. Nina Malloy has probably been there, but where hasn't she been on this rock? Uh, she's taken refuge underground in the crumbling remains of Mudhold fasting. The thing she is doing there. You can't imagine. Be careful. Angerard is a delicate creature, and something deep inside of her is shattered. She would not listen to reason, and that makes her dangerous. I don't know how to thank you. She's settled deep in the bottom of Mudhold Fasting, where the cavern opens to the cliffs and waters below. She is obsessed with the sea, always searching the horizon for ships. Be careful! Second, the Alphar. You would not enjoy the awkward scrambles needed to traverse this isle, my love. They are treacherous. I must resemble the tumblers we witnessed in Sun Camp all those many nights ago, reeling and twisting. The Arathi were not the only inhabitants of Gallows End, though surely the oldest. Natural caverns in the north and south boast evidence of a variety of other visitors, both man and beast. Alfar weapons and armor litter the beaches, treasures for the taking. They too seem to have departed in haste. It is a troubling trend. What is terrorizing everyone? Give my good wishes to the Templars, dear Netta. As always, you are in my thoughts. What do you want? Don't you know that dead Kel will kill you if he finds you scurrying around in his tunnels? You should have better sense. 
better sense than me at the very least. I am Angarad Glindower. Why? Who are you? You may not believe it to gaze upon me, but I was once a civilized person. A wife. A mother. A mage. All that was taken from me when I awoke on Gallows End. Years I've wasted here. Years I will never recover. But no more! I am fulfilling my purpose, doing what needs to be done to release me from my imprisonment. Fair Gorta are not easy to create. It takes time, energy, power. But I do it, because Dead Kel and I have an agreement. He is not as cold as they say, and he has his reasons for being a monster, just as I now have mine. I belong to no one. Kel and I have an agreement. That is all. He has sworn to take me back to civilization. Back to Rathia. Home. But I must create for him enough fair gore to crewmen to see him through his coming conquests. I possess rare skills. Especially so far from the Scolia Arcana. It seems mages are in short supply on Gallows End. And you would take me with you? Back to Rathia. I have no need of Dead Kel's bargain if I can find another way to escape Gallows End. I will choose to believe you, but only because I wish to return to my children as the same woman who left them. I cannot become a monster. I am no one. I practiced magic in the Scolia Arcana as an adept. I had a husband and two children. The Order asked for volunteers to protect a shipment of goods for the Olmain. I still don't know why I did it. He is one to be feared. Clever and charismatic, the epitome of a rogue. Or at least he was, before his untimely death. I wanted to believe him. Who doesn't want to hear that their dreams can become a reality? But first, I found it serene. An island of quiet in the bustle of our maddening world. But the call of home soon became unbearable. Let's go. Yes?
Hello, my friend. I don't know how you managed to convince Angerod you found a ship. Frankly, I don't care. She's free. All I ever wanted was to keep her safe and to get her home. Friends protect each other. And perhaps she has become more than that to me. Even if my feelings were never returned, Angerod will see her family again, but not from dead Kel's prow. I promise you that. Take care of yourself. Leave my luck. You're the new Archsage. Please, where can I find food and shelter? A whole Dverga keep, you say? That should do quite nicely, thank you. I wasn't always so gifted in magic. I started to manifest abilities about the same time as I started to notice boys. So my parents sent me off to the Scolia Arcana. Never decided if they were trying to protect me more from magic or from boys. Perhaps one day we can start our own chapter house out here. One to rival even the one in Rathia. We were conducting magical experiments on the open sea. It was thought that we could use our magic to open up a hole in the water. Turns out we did. Only it swallowed the ship whole, killing everyone but me. Back to my gems. Oh! <laughs> 
another one, eh? Well, the Connor just keeps drawing them in. Fish trapped in his widening net. What is it you want, Castaway? The simplest answer to your problems lies beyond those cliffs there. One swift drop, and then peace. You know as well as I do that Akara does not exist. His magic is merely illusion. His will, coincidence. Do not fall prey to the words of the passionate. You will thank me for it. A good man, but woefully misguided. Alder wants to believe in something good, who know that his sentence here was not a punishment for his past. But no good man would ever end up on Gallo's end. <laughs> Don't let anyone tell you that Akara rules this island. Such a claim is fallacy. The pirate is the only one on Gallo's end with any authority. He will reclaim what is his in the end. You will see. There is no escape from this island. You will come to learn that in time. Fate binds us to its beaches, and only the setting sun ever truly escapes. But even then, it's only for a few hours. I have been on this cursed island for more than a lifetime. Longer than any man should rightfully have to wait for death. But that is my fate, you see. To wait. I meant to remain here until my true purpose presented itself. But long have I been searching. And now my only desire is for escape. In any form. Odd creatures, those watchers. Avoid them. You'll thank me later. It is the height of idiocy. Even for fools, the villagers of Cape Solis find new and impressive ways to surmount their own stupidity. Every life given to Akana is a life lost. Oh, I know of them. Not to say that I agree with the practice, because I do not. But they are hard people to miss on this island. The Scion is Akara's greatest triumph. Mortals are trusty. They will follow a god if one of their own tells them to. Oh, priest, eh? How is it that most pawns aren't even aware of the game? Every few years, Alder sends me a hopeless spirit. Praying I can provide a fate weaver's wisdom. But I have no hope to give. I have nothing. Dead Kell has seen to that. Look around you. We are damned. Where is he? Everywhere, you fool. Everywhere. Try to leave this island. Dead Kell is there. Try to hide in the fastings. Dead Kell is there. You're better off hiding from your own shadow. I was. You know of Fate Weavers then? Know that we are a tragic brood destined for a life of isolation and disappointment. <laughs> Why read the cards when you already know what they say? I will die on this island. As will you. <laughs> Easy for you to say. You've only just arrived on our fair paradise. Come to me again in 20 years. You will not be so spirited then. Perhaps our fortunes would be different if we'd been touched by Akara, as dead Kel was. Perhaps not. Only dead Kel can move freely here. He possesses a ship, one that can navigate these perilous waters. Oh no, we're here to stay. Both of us. Without a boat, we have nothing. It is said 
the dead Kel is the only mortal to have ever laid eyes upon a Kana. To have spoken with him as an equal. Not even the Siam has been so close. And she is linked to a Kana through magic. Now you know why dead Kel remains a threat long after he was supposedly killed by the Alpha. He is not a natural thing. His life is both blessing and curse. It is called the Requiem. Years ago, the vessel belonged to dead Kel's lover, the Whispering Witch. But when his own flagship, the Stormbringer, was sunk off the coast, he needed a replacement. As far as I know, it is the only seaworthy ship on all of Gallo's End. And what a prize it would be to possess. Wonderful! Go! Defeat Dead Kell's army of minions. Steal his prized ship out from under him. Oh, I await your victory. If you can steal the Requiem, then I will sing like a seabird. I will tell you all you wish to know. <laughs> Hope your death is quick. Don't underestimate the witch. I am a fate weaver, but she has powers beyond even my understanding. I stand by, watching as the threads of fate weave themselves into irreversible patterns. But not the witch. She plays those threads like a harp. Her power is in her ability to stay between our world and the world where destinies are forged. She hides there, between fate and possibility. Dead Kell and his hanged men keep the ship in the Dark Harbor, their private port northwest of here. Your destiny is yours. Yes?
Stand clear. Our business does not concern you, Long Legs. Pippin will be back momentarily with the tome, and then we will be on our way. Until then, do not interfere. I am aware of him. The comings and goings of barbarous rabble is not my province. The fact that I am here on this rock at all is proof that I've somehow offended my superiors. It is torture. They'd sooner burn a book for warmth than learn how to build their own fire. The sea dwarfs have no respect for what we hold dear. They aren't fit to walk the earth. That is why they're exiled to the oceans. I am Templar Tenses, here on behalf of the Basilica Nostra. The work of scholars is not usually my concern, but the Tome of Contrition is a particularly sensitive item and its fate is of an importance far beyond academics. Tracking the tome to this location was a monumental effort on the part of our scholars and mariners. Piracy is a dirty business, and I prefer to retrieve what we came for and depart. I find this sort of setting to be rather agitating. So sinister. It is called the Tome of Contrition and it is a record of gnomish experience throughout the ages. But that is all I can say. To reveal more could be detrimental to our expedition. Now if only Pepin would return from undersea fasting. A dread cloud hangs above this island. I can feel it. The Tome of Contrition was stolen by the Deverga in one of their barbaric raids. During the Edessa migration, we gnomes transported many artifacts from across the seas to the Great Library. The temptation was too much for such savages. But of all the relics lost to us, the Tome of Contrition is the most important. It is not my place to explain, and not yours to know. I will put it this way. The loss of such a book could do irreparable harm. It is my duty to stay here, to see to our higher purpose. But something must be done. Pepin's tardiness is a concern. Fine. Yes, it is decided. You may find Pepin, and you will be rewarded for doing so. But I accept no responsibility for your safety. 
None whatsoever. He means well, but neither his intellect nor his discipline are up to the caliber of even our weakest scholars. Pepin is perfect for tasks like this one, of the run and fetch variety. The tome was taken from one of our relic galleys during the migration to fill the great library of Edessa. As it always is with the Deverga, they had no idea of the worth of what they'd taken. It is the closest the Deverga on this island had to a vault. Their most valuable plunder is stored deep in its dark and dripping corridors. Goodbye. much bigger undertaking than the last, but a greater thrill as well. Let's see. Yes? Yes, this is all of it. I'll begin constructing the armory right away. The armory is still not finished. Bye. If it's not my best customer. Actually, you're pretty much my only customer. Me? I'm afraid I'm not for sale. Just kidding. I know that's not what you meant. Buy me a drink later, and maybe we'll talk. I've got quite the eclectic selection. Kind of out of necessity, seeing as we're in the middle of nowhere. We were caught in a fog bank off the coast of the plains of Erethel, when another ship came looming out of the mists in front of us. The captain tried to avoid it, but we ran aground on a reef. The ship broke apart, and I washed up here. I only got a passing glance at the other ship, but I think the name began with a C. Watch out for scabs. Hello. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Cillian, the Beastmaster. 
I'm a world famous beast trainer. Give me any kind of beast and I'll domesticate it. If you're interested in willing to get some food for me to use as a lure, I can train the beast to be your pet. Aye, it's something I've done since I was a young boy. I can domesticate almost any kind of animal to live and work at the keep. You fancy a large pet or a small one? Keep in mind, I can only maintain three pets at a time. The bigger the better, right? Which kind would you like? Wolves make fine pets, and are easy to find. Give me a day to track one down and train it. Take care. This island is quite fascinating. All the magic swirling about. Back to my gems. Busy, busy, busy. Just a few finishing touches remain. I'm very excited for you to see it. Which reminds me, Maifa tells me that a new arrival named Ollie Madsen was a master at arms before he landed here. Invite him to come here and he'll be an excellent addition to the keep. Bye. Hello. Your pet is all ready and wandering about the keep. Now that you have the pet, you should notice a boost in combat. They have that effect on their owners. If you feed your pet more, the boost will get even bigger. Take care. How can I help you today? Watch out for scabs. That makes me happy to be able to train beasts again. Training a pet for you creates a special bond, giving you benefits in combat. Would you like me to train one for you? You fancy a keep in mind, I can only make the bigger the which kind would you like? Bears are quite fun and keep away most pests. Give me a day to find one and we'll get started. Good day. 